Last fall, Cleveland experienced an influx of new leadership with after the November election, from a new city administration to new voices joining city council. And they are hard at work each day. So we've learned uh, just recently that our council women, House and Gray, uh, are unable to join us due to some committee meetings going long, but we are very excited to have two individuals from city council and their offices be able to join us to share insights on what it's like to be a part of the new administration and the happenings in City Hall. So first I'd like to introduce Jessica Columbi. She has over 15 years experience influencing and executing systems change in complex institutions. She is inherently collaborative and enjoys partnering with people to make organizations hum. She's currently the Director of Policy and Research for Cleveland City Council and previously served as the Executive Director of Career Services at Cleveland State University. Prior to her time on college campus, she served as Chief of Staff to the Chancellor of the Ohio Board of Regents, now the Ohio Department of Higher Education. She has completed the Gestalt Institute of Cleveland's training program and is also part of a small team that has developed an Ohio Attorney General Certified Cultural Competence Training for law enforcement and has trained over a thousand officers across two states and four counties. She has a bachelor's degree in art history from John Carroll University and a master's degree in psychology with a certification in diversity management from Cleveland State. We are also joined by Raja Whitley, who is the executive assistant to Councilwoman Stephanie House. She is a recent grad of The Ohio State University, where she obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science to not only learn about the systems and organization of government, but mainly to help advocate for others, especially the disadvantaged demographics. She assists in organizing community meetings, outreach materials, festivals, various events, conducting policy and issues research, while also fulfilling resident requests. The office's main goal is to reduce the barriers in government services by finding the answers of questions asked by community members. So I am so happy to welcome them with us today, and I am going to turn it over to Raja. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Raja. I'm very excited to be speaking to you all today. I am sorry that Councilwoman House couldn't um, come here, unfortunately, but, you know, we are here to speak. So... For me, working at City Council has been very hectic, but it's like a very great experience from um, being a recent graduate of The Ohio State University, just like almost a year ago now. I've learned so much um, being here, meeting different kinds of people from different backgrounds, different wards as well. Like not every ward is the same. They have different needs that they need to be met. And with that being said, working with Councilwoman House, she has an idea of meeting the people where they're at and trying to build relationships with them and build connections with them. So in doing so, we have community meetings in which we'll gather a lot of community members within the area and talk about discussions um, with like issues that they're having within their community, crime, violence, street concerns, um, if they want to build a business, uh, property acquisitions, uh, just listen to their ideas and hearing them out and um, trying to build a really great relationship and act as neighbors um, you know, trying to build that unity. And we also have community drop-ins as well, in which residents and um, stakeholders, they can meet with Council House in person. Um, so I think that's a really great idea because in politics, there's like this misconception that like, they don't really try to meet people where they're at. They just kind of stand stagnant still, but she actually wants to enforce change and um, be for her people. So as far as our visions and goals, we created the ABCs. A is access to resources. B is building family and neighborhood relationships. And C is creating a safe and vibrant neighborhood. So if anything aligns with that, we're going to work towards increasing that and um, meeting with churches and schools and organizations, just trying to figure out what can our office do to help you and um, succeed and just build a better community overall. As far as our goals, number one, we like to act assess Ward 7 capacity to meet the needs of Ward 7 residents and community partners, as I originally said, um, to develop and implement a comprehensive communication strategy to engage Ward 7 residents and communicate community partners. Three, partner with six resident-led groups that are actively working to solve a challenge in the ward. Four, create a method to equitably evaluate funding requests to Ward 7 council, Ward 7 council women. Five, connect 343 Ward 7 residents and community partners 
to upward mobility opportunities. And by upward mobility opportunities, people within our ward, they don't really have a lot of technology access. So it's good to provide, provide them with resources so they can get what they need to be, such as getting a job, um, having their children have access to uh, computers that they have at their home school, or they need a computer at home, you know, we want them to have resources as well so they can um, thrive. Six, prioritize the health of every team member serving our ward. And seven, embrace agape love, having fun and finding joy while improving the quality of life for all of our ward seven residents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking, you know, Raja and I don't get to spend a lot of time together and you just knocked my socks off. I'm like, <laughs> she was nervous that she wouldn't be able to answer, answer questions. I'm like, oh my God, you know everything. <laughs> So I'm sorry, Rachel, uh, was there, what was the question or is there a different question you'd like me to answer? We would love for you just to share a little bit about uh, your role and kind of your vision for the work being with council and with the new administration, and then we'll jump in for questions. Sure. Um, well, I think actually, um, with all due respect to our council women who are, yes, tied up in a safety committee hearing today, um, there's a, a piece of legislation going through relative to ARPA funding, the American Recovery Plan Act, which is money to address um, problems that have been exacerbated by COVID. I'm sure some of you are familiar with it. Um, it's great um, for Raja and I to talk a little bit because we do represent really different vantage points on council. So um, Raja works directly with Councilwoman House here in City Hall and in the ward. Um, my role is a bit different as Director of Policy and Research. There is a centralized staff that supports all 17 members of council. So um, we have a communications team, we have a legislative team, we have an IT team, of course, and then policy and research. Um, we're responsible for doing the research um, and preparing briefings for different council members based on various subject matters. And so we support all 17 members, which is an adventure. Um, and I would say um, one of the things that I've been thrilled about, and I agree with Raja, I think people underestimate the diversity in the city of Cleveland. Um, ward five is very different than 15. Uh, ward 12 is very different than four. Um, and I think, and wards of course are kind of random arbitrary lines that are drawn. They don't necessarily indicate neighborhoods. They're just how we've sliced the city up. Uh, there are obviously five police districts. So I've learned about all these layers of organization which kind of make your head spin. Um, but uh, anyway, this, Council, and especially under Council President Griffin, um, have been very policy driven, uh, which is very different from the previous administration. Um, this body is alive and breathing and well and active. Um, we have moved on everything from tax abatement, um, how to use something called CDBG funds, which are federal dollars toward uh, building and economic development, uh, complete and green streets. Uh, which is making sure that our streets are built more safely and um, in a more neighborhood friendly way. Uh, safely, they've introduced a safely policy for employees of the city of Cleveland, which is a special bank of paid time off for victims of domestic violence. Um, so we don't have to dip into our sick time or our vacation time or our personal time. Um, uh, any number of things. So um, really, we also introduced last week a resolution um, on community benefits agreements. So as Raja was talking, I was thinking about um, the importance of development going on in the city of Cleveland that actually engages our residents and doesn't develop at our residents, um, but rather with them. So yeah, we're kind of moving and shaking over here, which is fun. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much. Let's jump in to some Q&A. And for everyone on the call, if you have any questions for our speakers today, put those in the chat. No, let's start with, um, and Raja, I know you have some forward-facing time with the residents of Councilwoman House's ward. What do you hear from the residents that the ward of the ward, and what do they want to see in their community? Oh, they, I get calls, at least about maybe like 20 calls a day. So that's like, maybe like hundreds of calls per month about certain issues. I would say like our top issues are like maintaining vacant lots. People will complain about like their grass. Um, the last next to the home, the grass is high. And with the city of Cleveland, they only can cut it seven, every seven weeks. And we don't have enough, 
staff, so that creates a problem. And, you know, residents complain about that. Um, there's street concerns, there's potholes and pavements, um, also vacant homes as well that they want to be demolished. Um, the need of cameras for um, security surveillance, that's also something that people have concerns about because they want to feel safer within their neighborhood. You know, there's children walking. Um, also trying to keep the streets clean, such as like with illegal dumping or shoveling when um, winter comes, you know, we want, we want our children to like walk to school safely and um, just be in an environment that's welcoming that we want people to move to. So that's just a few out of the many concerns that we have, you know, we try to address it, try to um, contact departments to actually go out there and meet people because there's like laws, uh, like people that need stuff to get done. But my job is just like to enforce that and make sure it happens. I just wanted to underscore something that Raja was saying, which is something that's become very clear to me working for the city. Um, the city provides city services, many of which Raja just spoke to. The county provides social services. And so sometimes folks com conflate the two. Um, and certainly the city, I think, has picked up on a lot of social services support um, just because we want to take care of people, um, but it really is the responsibility of the county to handle social services and for the city um, to handle city services, which are things like managing vacant lots, street resurfacing, um, you know, water, stuff like that, trash collection, and um, people don't, people are pretty straightforward. They don't want a lot. They want the police to come when they call. Uh, they want the potholes filled on their streets. They want bus shelters to, to appropriately cover them in bad weather. Um, they just want things to work. So Jessica, from your perspective and your role, when you look at the work that needs to be done in the city and the, the work that you're doing, what are some of those challenges that you see and how might the city and the administration work to overcome some of those challenges? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> um, Raja did speak to safety. Uh, safety is um, an issue, uh, you know, there are something like 300 million guns on the street in this country. And so when we have a distinctly armed um, public, that makes uh, life challenging for, for every member of the community. And so making sure we're working with law enforcement, um, I see our friend Jennifer Johnson here on this call, she's the executive director of Canopy, which works with um, specifically children who are victims of sexual abuse, and not many people know that the Cleveland Police Department was a co-founder of that organization. And so I think folks underestimate how much um, Cleveland Police and law enforcement get so much bad press. They're actually really making a point to work with folks in the community to address um, multiple safety issues. So I think, um, unfortunately, you know, too often one side of a story is told. And uh, certainly what I've seen yes under the consent decree um, but just who the leadership is in our safety division they're working very much to build relationship and trust with the community um, i think that you know again we're down to basics resurfacing i've heard the council president say last time he checked um, both republicans and democrats hated potholes we don't have the luxury of being partisan you know we just um, uh, and that's that's working with the cdc network um, so i think as I'm trying to actually circle back to your question before I get too in the weeds on some of the issues. Appropriately working with our partners, um, I think um, role clarification, clear communication, consistent communication, you know, reaching residents who speak different languages, um, reaching residents through paper, uh, papers, postcards, and social media. Um, and I love Councilwoman House's idea of basically open office hours in her ward, uh, you can reach her at, um, where does she, she usually do those? Well, so with community drop-ins, we have them at different locations. Mm -hmm. So it can be in a central location for every neighborhood, for instance, like um, the Huff neighborhood, uh, Midtown, Asia Town, downtown, just so like, we're not like in one location and people have to come to us, we're trying to go out to them. So it varies. And that's definitely a challenge, right? We have one council person for what, 20,000 people mm -hmm. in multiples of neighborhoods. And um, we just have to hope that they're all lucky enough to have the staff like <laughs> Raja and other staff that they're able to hire, um, which is few and far between. So some of the challenges I think are capacity. 
Um, and, you know, we're struggling to figure out, I think a big question mark is income tax. You know, so much of the city's services are funded by income tax. And now that we have people working from home and not coming downtown or shopping or dining or working, uh, that number, that gap has yet to be fully understood. And so if um, the drop in income tax is significant enough, we got problems. So from both of your perspectives um, and being newer to your roles, can you talk a little bit about what it's like to work within the city council office and working alongside the new administration? Well, for me, working inside the city council office, um, I like it, although it really is kind of different. I used to work at the House of Representatives or as an intern um, for Councilwoman House, actually. So the process is kind of different. Um, I feel like in city council or um, city hall, like every department just does their job specifically. We don't really try to connect with each other or um, figure out ways, how can we make this department better? You know, how can we collaborate and um, make uh, processes easier as well for residents, such as land base applications. Um, that takes a while to get like a side yard or um, a vacant lot that's next to your house or a property that you own. It takes a while for it to get actually um, complete it. And that's something that we're also trying to work on and see like, okay, what's the easier process for this? So we can just give people these lots and they can beautify it, make it how they see fit and uh, keep up with it. I think that's a good idea for community members to do who actually want to be involved and make sure the city looks very welcoming and inviting. But you know, we just have to get the ball rolling and see what can we do to make this process easier and faster. One of the things that I have in common with Councilwoman House and with Raja is I often say we were raised in the state house. Uh, I worked in the state Senate about 15 years ago. And so there was a very, there was a certain way that I learned how government functions. So I've worked in state government, both for the state Senate. And as you mentioned in your generous introduction of me, I worked uh, for the Department of Higher Education. Um, so working in state government and now working in municipal government, um, it's a different view. Uh, I'll give a very specific example to working with the administration. Um, I think there is a healthy tension between the two, uh, the executive branch and the legislative branch. I know that the council president and the mayor meet weekly um, and they have a lot of things in common and they have a lot of different views um, on issues and how to get that done based on their own experiences and living in the city. Um, I would say uh, one of the great experiences that I have had so far is being part of what's called the Center for Economic Recovery, um, which is a fancy name for an internal team. Uh, so myself as the Director of Policy and Research and one of our policy analysts, Ann Tilly, she and I have been in weekly meetings with the mayor, uh, well not with the mayor, but with members of the mayor's cabinet um, on how to implement or use um, or plan for how to use these ARPA dollars. So that is that has been a very important collaborative effort between the legislative branch and the executive branch, between the council staff and the mayor's staff. So as you think about the work that you each do and those that you are working with through council, what do you feel you most hope to see through the work of the council? What's what's driving decisions and the vision for, for those working within the council office? Take a moment to think about that. That's a really great question. Uh, Rachel, you're, saying, you're asking what do we hope to see within city council? Hmm. I just hope that like, we can become um, more like put together with how we do things more organized, I'll say. Organized and um, try to make things more like digital or like, uh, not as paper routed-ish, you know? We do a lot of things through paper. I think if we're able to like do things more through technology, things can get done faster. And it's a way to track what's being done, who's um, doing it, when did it get done or accomplished, like right there on your computer screen, can't miss it. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's right there. Um, it just feels more uh, practical to me. I would like to see, my hope is to see more council members working together um, and not sort of being, uh, feeling like or positioned as the only person who can help that ward, which again, in some of my opening comments, you know, these are arbitrary lines that are drawn. 
um, when you look at, you know, Ward 5 and 12, as an example, you know, I would love to see Richard Starr and Rebecca Maurer doing things together. Um, I would love to see Chris Harsh and Jasmine Santana in 13 and 14, you know, doing things together. Um, I would love to see an East Side contingent, you know, one, two, four, and six. That's like uh, Joe Jones, Kevin Bishop, Deborah Gray, and Blaine Griffin. You know, what are the four of them doing on the East Side? Um, so seeing council members really lock arms and um, advance important work on behalf of like entire chunks of the city. I would love to see more of that. I love you for it. Let me, as also another example, um, safely, you know, brought together council members, uh, Jasmine Santana and Charlie Slife and Stephanie House, right? That you touch all three different sides of the city. Um, you have one of the new members, um, newest members in Councilwoman House, a newer member in Charlie Slife and a member who's been around for four years. So you, that was a real diverse group coming together on a particular cause. And um, I can't say it out loud, but I've been nudging Councilman's Life and Councilwoman House on another piece of legislation. So we're I'm like doing a little parent trap for those of you who get that cultural reference. <laughs> uh, try to do a little bit of a parent trap with various council members to say, hey, I've heard you talk about this as a priority. Hey, I've heard you say that you're interested in this thing. Why don't the two of you like get mm -hmm. together, you know, and so. Well, Jessica, how do we do more of that? How can those of us on the call also help with the work to try to encourage that collaboration among council members? Be in touch, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, show up to these open office hours, show up to city um, events, um, let them know. I would say, yeah. you know, don't be shy. Um, when you see your council members say, you know, I've heard you talk about this thing. I also heard, you know, this member talk about that thing. Um, we would love to see you take a stand together. You know, our city is so balkanized as is, right? The first question we ask people is like, are you from the east side or the west side? Where'd you go to high school? Um, you know, and so how do we would love to see you model um, coming together and bringing parts of the city together. And if you have any ideas, share. I mean, council members, I think this is why, you know, they knock themselves out yeah. to be in the wards and to be in the neighborhoods and to get ideas from people. So don't be shy. And we also have like a web form on the city council website as well, where you can just click on your um, city council member's picture or the, your ward number, and you can fill out a form, a general inquiry form as well, or email us, however way you want to contact or call us. So we have a couple questions coming in about how do we find out about open office hours, city events? How do we stay connected to the council members out in the community and the work that they're doing? So you may also be able to be added onto our email newsletter. So we have um, a lot of events going on on there. We'll post that and email it to you. Also, our newsletter. This is our newsletter that we also mail out uh, three times a year. So that could be that. Or like postcards we'll mail out to people in the community. Um, just like, just make sure you reach out to us because they're mainly for people in our ward. So we can give it to them. But anyone is welcome, any organization or um, community member, just, you know, reach out to us. The office hours vary because we do that monthly. So at the end of the month, we create our office hour dates and locations for the next month. So for October, we created it, but um, our communications person is working on a flyer for it. And we can actually post it up as well. And when Raja says our, not all council members offer those mm -hmm. open office hours or those community office hours. That's something you could also ask your council member for if you're interested. Um, again, I know that they're torn, you know, multiple ways. Um, I would strongly suggest following Cleveland City Council on Twitter and Facebook right. and Instagram. I would also seek out your particular council members of interest on social media. They all are on Facebook, um, some on Twitter, some on Instagram. So um, look for your council members on social media. Um, I'm also going to take a big leap here and suggest you look me up on the city council website. And if you want to email me, um, I'm happy to either get you the council member and their executive assistant co contact information, or you're also welcome to go, um, the woman who runs our, our public calendar, her name is Kimberly Moss. She has an email listserv and she will send you, um, you'll be on that list to receive all notifications of all public meetings. Um, so it's, it's here if you can, we're open and available and findable. 
So thinking about the work that you've been doing and what you've learned thus far through your roles, what do you want people to know about the work of city council that they may not know? Another great question. The work of city council they may not know. Well, for instance, for Councilwoman House, she has worked on legislation that has been passed for the Black Women and Girls Commission. Uh, basically, we're bringing together 12 groups of women from diverse backgrounds, ages, um, and things of that nature, just to kind of have a stable um, group that can think of ways, how can we make Black women more safe and feel better within our community? Because Cleveland was ranked the worst um, city for Black women, and we're trying to definitely improve on that and um, seek ways to um, change that narrative. So we have ended the application, so they're now reviewing them and um, seeing which 12 people would be the best fit for that. So we're working on that right now, which is trying to make our neighborhood brighter and more welcoming and vibrant as part of our ABCs and our goals. I would say I wish more people understood that public comment was a thing before it got all the news a couple of years ago. Uh, public comment is available in multiple ways. You can always contact your council person. Um, as I said, they're, they're having ward meetings and community meetings. They have an executive assistant who answers their calls and emails. Um, you can make public comment at any committee hearing. Um, you just have to contact the chair and see what their policy is because it's up to the chair um, to determine, you know, how, how public comment is handled in those committee hearings. Um, of course, there's now public comment every Monday night at council meetings. Uh, there's also free parking at City Hall um, on Monday nights for council meetings, which is great. Um, so I just, I wish people understood that um, they can participate in their government and with their public officials more than they might think. So thinking about the experiences you've had thus far, what has surprised you most about being in the council office? I think what has surprised me most is that um, before even coming into this job, I didn't really think people would call city council like every, a lot of issues, like every single issue. So I think it will be, um, I think that was what surprised me, just the volume of people that have problems within the city, and want things to be done and the um, the volume of how like we're getting it done or it's being slow or it's not really being taken care of it's just that ratio is just not matching it's not okay so I thought that's something that really like, surprised me I thought there would be like a better way to um, serve the community and um, get their needs met such as like with 311 that's our constituent respondents um, department and I thought that would be like more organized but it's not they don't really have all the answers so it's not, Sometimes they'll call us for the answers and then we'll have to give it to them. So I think uh, improving that system will be better, which that is happening. That's in the works of happening, improving that system. So people could just say, um, when is my grass going to be cut? They can call them for that. Or um, I need this pothole to be filled. When can I expect that to be filled? And um, just have that communication going on. So there's, I don't know, just so things are done more properly and they don't have to wait and they realize that they're being heard and we got their, um, correspondence. Um, I think I, I, similarly to Raja, I underestimated the demands on council people's time and how much people ask them, people in the community ask them for help. And so I agree with Raja, if I had a magic wand, I would fix the 311 system also. Um, again, uh, very differently than the narrative that's in the news, it's a both and. We need both 311 and our city council members uh, to address needs in the community and so um i do i agree i wish it i wish we could hire somebody from progressive insurance <laughs> to coach uh 311's call center and they could hire five more people um you know to uh coordinate 311 better and i guess that's it is like the lack of um resources available to the city to modernize i know that that's one of the mayor's priorities is to modernize city hall and um that is a challenge, whether it's through technology, going paperless, um, making sure that leaks are fixed in the roofs. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think I, I knew our, our safe, you know, our leave policies, uh, we actually, it's hard to attract talent to work for the city um, because our leave policies are not up to date. So 
really looking forward to continuing that modernization of City Hall and City Council. Well, Raja and Jessica, we, again, thank you so much for jumping in and being here with us today to give insights into the workings of City Council and the new voices and the new faces that we have amongst our leaders. And we will be sure to share the website for City Council in our follow-up email, and please take their advice to follow up, check in with your council members, get on the mailing list, and ask the questions and encourage that collaboration. And also, Rachel, I'll put my email in here just in case um, anyone has like any questions. So. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your generosity in welcoming us. I know that we're not your elected officials. <laughs> it's hard to fill Councilwoman House and Councilwoman Gray's shoes, and we don't. Um, but hopefully we brought a little something interesting for your lunch hour today. <laughs>